do not climb on the vessel. Look at this. This is a World War II rescue boat. Amazing. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Troon in Ayrshire and I'm going to head a couple of miles up the coast here to a town called Irvine. And I've decided I'm going to go to the Maritime Museum there because, well, why not? <laughs> Maybe we'll see something interesting. Maybe we won't. I've never been in it before, but I'm quite keen to go in and have a look. I just clicked over the 10,000 mile mark. <laughs> I think my last 1,000 miles has been my slowest <laughs> uh, 1,000 miles so far. Obviously, I've been doing a little bit less. Yeah, just because of the weather and stuff like that. So, we're down near the port here at Troon. You got a lot of timber coming in here. There's actually a, a timber place here, but you see all of this? It comes in off the ships. And then obviously gets turned into it. Oh, what is that? Wow, somebody's milked a sea, seagull there. This is Troon Yacht Haven here. There's a nice restaurant and stuff in there, Scots. It's a nice little town. It's got a couple of beaches. Where I was there, south of where I was, the south of that ballast point there is um, South Beach in Troon. And on the left hand side here we're about to see Barassi Beach. It's one of the biggest beaches you'll see in the west coast of Scotland actually. Stretches for miles. There it is. Very nice. Look at this beach, it's fantastic. Now you can barely see it there, but that's Arran, just out through the mist there. You know, on a clear day it's absolutely stunning from here. And it changes all the time, it's very changeable. It's fantastic even in the winter. Now folks, this used to be my local beach, believe it or not, I used to live here. In fact, I used to live in a house just behind me here. I used to come walking a dog here. Now, this road appears to be closed. It's a little bit of a shame. We could go around a little bit. Now, if you look south of here, you see where the sun is. That's where I was a minute ago, just coming past the, the yacht haven there. But if you look north here, you see these buildings here? That's where I'm headed to, actually, at the far end of this beach. Now this, the Barassi Beach goes all the way up the coast here as far as Irvine Beach, yeah? So I'm going to go to the point there at Irvine Harbour, but before I get there I'm going to go somewhere else. Lovely evening, it's windy. Oh, I'm pulling away in third gear. <laughs> it's, well <seen> I'm, <laughs> it's well seen I'm in a Himalayan. <laughs> oh man. Try that in a 1200. <laughs> Dundonal Crescent. Down here there actually used to be a military base, an army encampment. I'm pretty sure that's where these buildings are here. And these were sort of military houses we see on the left behind me. about too short actually. I didn't mean to come this way but it's alright. We'll pop up to the next one. And by that I mean I, I came off the bypass there a little bit too early. <laughs> Edgar Hill Cemetery. Why am I going to a cemetery I hear you ask? Just gonna turn up here actually. Wow. This is called Nadgar Hill Cemetery and it's sitting on a small hill here. And the reason I'm here is because of something that happened in 1297. William Wallace had killed the Sheriff of Lanark, yeah? So Scotland was in a little bit of an uprising, and some Scottish forces found themselves here in Irvine, waiting for English forces to approach from the south here, led by Henry Percy. Back then this was all boggy ground, surrounding this little hill here. It was a fantastic position to be in. And it's no longer here, but there was a loch 
right in front of me, exactly where I am here now, running all the way down towards Bertry Hill and what is now Stained Castle Roundabout. And that's where the English forces had camped, yeah. But this was known as the Capitulation of Irvin. There was a lot of infighting amongst the Scots at that time. This was very early in the sort of wars of independence in Scotland. So there was no real leader. It's entirely possible that Scots and English history would have been completely rewritten if there had been a battle here that day. Yeah, If, for example, Robert the Bruce had been killed or injured, or if William Wallace had been here. yeah, Because it was only a couple of months after this that... William Wallace was to go on and defeat the English at the Battle of Stirling. I just find it such a fascinating little footnote in history, yeah? We're sitting here in a graveyard in the middle of a modern housing estate on what would have been the banks of a loch that no longer exists. I can guarantee you that the vast majority who live or work here or go to these industrial estates every single day have absolutely no idea of the history that sits right below their feet. Let's go visit this maritime museum, see what we can see. I need to stop and put fuel in this actually. We'll do that now. Well, we don't need an extra long hose for the Himalayan, that's for sure. Shocking price of fuel. Well, it's going to be one heck of a sunset. Now, it probably sounds a bit odd that I'm going to a museum when the sun's setting. It's only just coming up on four o'clock. <laughs> so pretty soon we're going to get the sun setting just over Arran there. Of course, everybody's turning up in their cars. I'm just going to pull in and turn, actually, because I want to go to this museum. It's a bit of a shame. They did a lot of work here to sort of modernise it. You know, like 20 years ago, putting all these paths and stuff in. And this huge car park here. And that was for this thing here, the big idea it was called. It's a science thing. You see this bridge that goes across the water? Unfortunately, like most of these big ideas, it didn't actually come to much. And it sort of brought the whole area down again. And then over here, we had the Magnum Leisure Centre, which again, closed a few years ago and it's been knocked down. So everything's being replaced with housing estates again, you know. So even look at this, right, we've got the Harbour Arts Centre here, which is nice. But see, we look at this building here, the ship, that's closed down. That used to be easily one of the best restaurants in Ayrshire. And it's a really, really old building as well. It was hundreds of years old. All the sailors and stuff used to go in there. And now it's done, you know. It's been done since the start of the pandemic, unfortunately. An absolute travesty. There's still some nice things around here. These little courtyards with the artist studios and, and stuff like that. It's a little bit different. It's a nice little area. I mean, I wish they would finish the building of it, you know. That's a lot of boat in it. So this would have been the old slipway. Now this is the the cafe and gift shop. So it's a nice place to sit and have a coffee, you know. If I had more time, I might go in. Let's see how long how long I'm in the museum for. We'll go to the museum first. If I've still got time, I'll go in there. Now, the building itself is a historic building. It's a Category A listed building, this. And it was a machine workshop, it was an engine workshop at one point. You know? Pretty minted. Let's park here. Now, this boat here is a World War II air sea rescue vessel. Now, I'm not sure if it would be painted that colour when the U-boats were around. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to read and try and find out. Look at this thing. Wow. So folks, I went in that little maritime museum there in Irvine. It was only £4.25 to get in, which is quite cheap, I reckon. Now, apart from the staff, obviously, it seems like I was the only person in the building. So go and have a look at that. I'll see you back here in a minute. This is actually a fishing boat from the east coast of Scotland, the Katie. 
It's called a Zulu vessel. Not 100 years old. Apparently it was very fast. <laughs> I always find these places really fascinating. And usually, unfortunately, almost empty. And this one's empty today. I'm probably about the fourth or fifth visitor they've had. You see these old engines? Looks like the type of thing you'd find in a Royal Enfield. <laughs> Now this is interesting, this is a gas turbine jet engine that was designed for the Vulcan bomber. But it was later fitted to HMS Exmouth in the 1960s. It's rare to see that crossover. Look at this thing. So look at this sailing galley, it was built for the Marcus of Butte in 1819. It's a beauty. It's called Lady Guildford. It was named after his wife. The size of these things are huge. Now, kind of the real reason I'm sitting here, guys, is in the next video I want to do a little bit of a Q&A. Now, I've had a lot of questions on the channel. Something that didn't occur to me, I've had a lot of questions on Facebook and Instagram. You know, I didn't realise that people might start to track me down on different platforms, <laughs> which I don't mind. But anyway. It results in me getting quite a lot of questions, whether it's about the channel or my plans or about Himalaya. Now, there might be some technical questions here that I don't necessarily know the answer to, you know, things about tyres and stuff like that. So I'll throw those questions out and if anybody in the comments can help people out, then that's great. If you've got any burning issues or anything you desperately want to ask, then feel free to put those down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them in the next video. So we're coming into this sort of lifeboat section here, folks. Now the older they were, the smaller they were. I think it's quite interesting. I find this style here particularly fascinating because these used to be dropped from the bottom of aeroplanes, believe it or not, for downed airmen and stuff like that. You see this big arrow in the front? That's because airmen were unfamiliar with what end of the boat they're supposed to be sailing. <laughs> you know? This one's actually made of metal. This boat here actually, it's not the oldest boat in the building, but I did a bit of research before I came here and this is the one I particularly wanted to talk about. The TGB it's called. This is a lifeboat that used to be stationed in the Orkneys. And it's one of the most dangerous stretches of water in the entire British Isles. The boat here was launched 34 times in its career and actually rescued 24 people. But on the 17th of March 1969, it was actually called out to assist a ship called the Irene that had run aground in a severe storm. Now this wasn't the only boat called out at that time, but during that storm it was hit by a wave that was estimated to be over 100 feet high. Now that crew who had rescued 24 people all lost their lives. There was eight men aboard this ship. They were all washed out to sea. Like most lifeboats, they were designed to survive even if the crews weren't. So the ship actually righted itself and then it was transferred to Ireland where it had another 41 rescue callouts and saved another 34 people before it was finally retired in 1979. Amazing. Anyway, that's it for this one guys. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below. Maybe even smash that notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video to YouTube. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.